Hi, in this film I'm going to examine the issue of free will and determinism. And remember that there are three basic positions. There is the position of the libertarian, people like Van Inwagen, who argues that free will is true and causal determinism is false as a hard deterministic view and explanation of human behaviour. Secondly, we have the compatibilist or the soft determinist like David Hume, who argue that you can believe both in free will and some idea of determinism. And thirdly, you have the view of the hard determinist like Ted Honderick, who argues that free will is an illusion and causal determinism is true and an explanation of human behaviour. And I want to evaluate today the case for hard determinism. And let's begin by reminding ourselves of John Locke's example of the person in the locked room. And John Locke's argument is this. Imagine you are in a locked room, but you are there quite voluntarily. And you're meeting friends, say in a pub, and you're sitting there happily having a drink and passing the time of day. Now, you don't realise that, in fact, the all pub doors are all locked, and therefore, should you choose to leave, you would be unable to do so. And it's an in interesting example, because Locke was himself a compatibilist, so don't please describe him as a hard determinist. But the point he is making is this, that being voluntarily there in the pub with our friends is not enough to give us active power to leave. So freedom, says Locke, is more than voluntarism or being there voluntarily. Freedom must include the active power to leave. And there seems to me to be three options. One is we sit there quite happily, oblivious to the idea that we are unable to leave. That is the hard determinist view. Secondly, we get up, decide to leave and go and rattle the door, but are unable to do so. That is the view that we have power, but not enough to leave. And thirdly, there is the view that we can get, stand up choose to leave and go and smash the door down. That is the view that freedom must include an active power to realise the goals that we have as a human being. Now notice that the free will debate is easier to understand if we realise that there are a number of views of freedom that are being considered. One, that freedom is an active power. Two, that freedom is equivalent to what we call negative freedom or the absence of any constraint. Now, by this definition of freedom, which is the one that Hume gives us, the person who's sitting there voluntarily is actually free because nothing is actively constraining or stopping them leaving. They're not tied down. They're not obviously mentally deranged or ill um, and they're not having a gun pointed to them pointed at them. So they are free in that sense to leave, but that is freedom as an absence of constraint. And the, the final view is that they're, they're not free at all. Okay, so we have three different views of freedom in this case. Now, Locke's point, as I've said, is that freedom has to include an active power or the ability to leave. And in the case of the locked room, the person doesn't have that ability. Now, why, using Locke's analogy, is the hard determinist case philosophically wrong or incoherent? Incoherent. I would argue for three reasons. One, it fails to take into account the role of metaphysical beliefs in the freedom debate. So it's what I believe about my own power that is the key thing. Let's take the example of an alcoholic. They are fairly obviously not free to leave their alcoholism. But in the case of the alcoholic, the key thing is their own belief system. Because we find when we talk to alcoholics that they deny that they have a problem.
So the first step in the 12 step program is to admit that you're powerless over your addiction. Notice this is a paradox because the first step to liberty, to freedom from alcoholism, is actually changing your belief about yourself. First, you have to admit you have a problem. And secondly, and this is a paradox, you have to admit and believe that you are powerless to do anything about it because then you will seek the help of the group who will lead you through the 12 step program to freedom. So the first problem is that causal determinism takes a scientific view of the world, reduces the nature of causation to physical brain waves and physical causes within the mind. And that is simply not a true expression of how humans behave and what motivates them, which is metaphysical beliefs. Secondly, it denies the possibility that I can, in fact, change my mind. And this is what Van Inwagen calls moments of real indeterminacy, when in a sense you feel yourself torn in two ways. And as an empirical fact, that seems to explain my own experience of making difficult choices. So empirically, causal determinism, hard determinism, determinism appears to me to be false. And thirdly, it reduces the human will to brain waves and chemical interactions within the mind. And that seems to me simply a, a false step. What these people say is that, like Ted Hondrick, is that the mind is like a computer and that it is programmed, therefore, to react in certain ways determined and predetermined by our past experience and our genetics and so on. But this is simply false. And the reason it's false is that what you are looking at now, the whole experience of perception in the human mind is actually metaphysical. It is not ex explainable by simply describing it as brain waves in the same way that the colour yellow is not explainable simply by talking about brain waves. And for these three reasons, I think the hard determinist case is actually a form of scientific reductionism. It reduces human experience, the experience of freedom and the freedom of the will, to something less than what it actually is.